As they prepared for sleep in the inn at Bree, darkness lay on Buckland. A mist strayed in the dells and along the river bank. The house at Crick Hollow stood silent. Fatty Bolger opened the door cautiously and peered out. A feeling of fear had been growing on him all day, and he was unable to rest or go to bed. There was a brooding threat in the breathless night air. As he stared out into the gloom, a black shadow moved under the trees. The gate seemed to open of its own accord and close again without a sound. Terror seized him. He shrank back, and for a moment he stood trembling in the hall. Then he shut and locked the door. The night deepened. There came the soft sound of horses led with stealth along the lane. Outside the gate they stopped, and three black figures entered, like shades of night creeping across the ground. One went to the door, one to the corner of the house on either side, and there they stood, as still as the shadows of stones while the night went slowly on. The house and the quiet trees seemed to be waiting breathlessly. There was a faint stir in the leaves, and a cock crowed far away. The cold hour before dawn was passing. The figure by the door moved. In the dark, without moon or stars, a drawn blade gleamed, as if a chill light had been unsheathed. There was a blow, soft but heavy, and the door shuddered. Open! In the name of Mordor! Said a voice, thin and menacing. At a second blow, the door yielded and fell back. With timbers burst and lock broken, the black figures passed swiftly in. At that moment, among the trees nearby, a horn rang out. It rent the night like fire on a hilltop. Awake! Fear! Fire! Foes! Awake! Fatty Bolger had not been idle. As soon as he saw the dark shapes creep from the garden, he knew that he must run for it or perish. And run he did out of the back door, through the garden, and over the fields. When he reached the nearest house, more than a mile away, he collapsed on the doorstep. No! No, no, no! He was crying. No, not me! I haven't got it! It was some time before anyone could make out what he was babbling about. At last they got the idea that enemies were in Buckland, some strange invasion from the old forest. And then they lost no more time. The brandy bucks were blowing the horn call of Buckland that had not been sounded for a hundred years, not since the white wolves came in fell winter when the brandy wine was frozen over. Awake! Awake! Far away, answering horns were heard. The alarm was spreading. The black figures fled from the house. One of them let fall a hobbit cloak on the step as he ran. In the lane, the noise of hoofs broke out, and gathering into a gallop, went hammering away into the darkness. All about Crick Hollow there was the sound of horns blowing, and voices crying and feet running. The black riders rode like a gale to the north gate. Let the little people blow, Sauron would deal with them later. Meanwhile they had another errand. They knew now that the house was empty and the ring had gone. They rode down the guards at the gate and vanished from the 